There's so much nonsense out there about batteries. Like about, you can believe about 1% of what you read. You can have an enormous difference in the power density and the energy density and the cycle life between one chemistry and another. They can be really enormously different. We can't live without energy, which is why batteries have always been in high demand. Is it possible for batteries to last forever? We may not be far from the day when we will no longer need to charge our phones once a day. A fresh battery may soon run our gadgets for years. There has always been tremendous competition between Tesla and its competitors, and Elon Musk has always been at the forefront of that battle, teasing investors and opponents with the promise of a fight. What has Elon revealed about the nuclear battery? Join me today in this video as we explore Elon's nuclear diamond battery that he has just revealed. A nuclear waste-based nano-diamond technology might be the answer to reducing the environmental impact of battery manufacturing and disposal. Batteries are the invention that keeps the contemporary world running. The battery is required when we need to operate anything that cannot be plugged in. And the quest for a better battery is being pursued in labs worldwide. Consider a future in which you could go an entire week without having to recharge your phone's battery. Your phone's battery could last a week, a month, a year, or let's say, a very long time. According to other companies, nuclear diamond battery technology can kill two birds with one stone. It can provide long-term energy storage while reusing atomic waste. Is this the next big thing in battery tech, or is it just hype? Is it secure? To start with, nuclear power plants create energy by atomic fission. This process involves attacking radioactive uranium atoms with neutrons, producing a tremendous amount of heat. This heat is then utilized to power a turbine by vaporizing water into steam. The turbine is connected to a generator that generates energy. All power plants operate on the same premise, the only difference is the heat generation mode. Compared to nuclear fission, other technologies create significantly less heat. 8 kilowatt hours from 1 kilogram of coal. 12 kilowatt hours from 1 kilogram of mineral oil. 24 million kilowatt hours from 1 kilogram of U-235. Nuclear waste, which directly threatens all life forms, is one of the most significant drawbacks of nuclear power plants. This is due to the waste ionization radiation, which is transferred in the form of waves or subatomic particles, and can harm the DNA of people and all living things that come into contact with it. Only the United States, Sweden, Finland, and a few others have irreversible nuclear waste storage facilities, commonly known as geological disposal facilities. Over the last 40 years, the United States has accumulated 76,430 tons of nuclear waste. The numerous dangers of nuclear waste are undeniable. Nevertheless, the same waste also provides beneficial radioactive isotopes, with countless practical applications. The issue is that identifying valuable isotopes in the waste is challenging. Nuclear waste must be disposed of permanently safely. It must also be safely stored for eventual reprocessing. When the Magnox nuclear reactors in the United Kingdom were deactivated in 2015 after more than half a century of service, a team of physicists and chemists from the University of Bristol chose to work on the nuclear waste that they had left behind. 95,000 tons of graphite blocks were found in the trash, employed as regulators to regulate atomic fission. Years of constant neutron bombardment on graphite blocks had converted the inert carbon in the graphite to radioactive carbon-14, or C14, categorized as nuclear waste. The scientists chose to experiment with carbon-14 removed from graphite blocks. Their study was based on the notion that a diamond produces an electric current when exposed to radiation. The low-yield beta particles of carbon-14 have a concise, penetrating range and can quickly absorb solid materials. They noticed that C14 was not dispersed uniformly among the graphite blocks during the process. Near the fuel rods and on the surface were regions of high concentration. They planned to boil the blocks to force the C14 gas out of the concentrated ends. Under high temperature and pressure, this C14 gas was collected and changed into synthetic diamonds. Radioactivity is unaffected by high pressure or temperature. The electrons in the diamond's crystal lattice were thrown off by the beta particles from the C14, allowing electron transport and thus the creation of electricity. Because diamonds are formed from C14, they are naturally radioactive. An additional non-radioactive protective coating is applied to safeguard the diamonds from radioactivity. Now let us turn our focus to the future battery, the nuclear diamond battery. 
Scientists from the University of Bristol came up with the idea for a nuclear diamond battery and presented it for the first time in 2016. Professor Tom Scott gave a talk about how his team created a synthetic diamond that can generate a modest electric current when exposed to a radioactive field. The resulting battery is nearly self-charging because the diamond may generate a charge near a radioactive source. The diamond battery is a beta voltaic solar cell, similar to a photovoltaic solar cell but transforms beta radiation into energy instead of photons. C14 methane and hydrogen plasma are employed at high temperatures to generate diamond layers through chemical vapor deposition. The battery's diamond is made up of thin layers of large crystalline particles making it far smaller than the diamond seen on rings. Furthermore, its multi-layer structure prevents radiation leakage and human health risks. However, these batteries may generate just a few microwatts of power. Sadly, this is not how electric automobiles will be powered in the future, and they can only power a limited number of devices. The maximum theoretical life of these batteries is 28,000 years. Microwatts, on the other hand? That's low, but if dozens of these battery cells were linked together, they could power some low-powered devices. There are currently no video demos of the technology available. The promise of the radioactive diamond battery, on the other hand, remains quite genuine. How does this battery work? Diamonds are excellent heat conductors, and micro-sized diamonds transport heat away from radioactive isotope substances to where electricity is created. The nuclear diamond battery, or NDB, uses residual graphite from a graphite-cooled nuclear reactor. The gadget might last for thousands of years thanks to radioactively tainted graphite and heat-conducting diamonds. NDB's idea uses numerous layers of diamond and radioactive waste panels to create additional energy. Though the long battery life is a positive, each battery cell only provides a small amount of energy necessitating the use of many cells to operate ordinary and larger gadgets. The battery will be enclosed in layers of paneled nanodiamonds to absorb the energy produced by the isotopes. The battery will continue to produce energy without recharging since isotopes have thousands year half-lives and diamonds are great heat conductors. Perhaps a question we need to ask ourselves is about the safety of the nuclear diamond battery. Because the batteries are encased in diamond, the world's hardest known substance, they are safe to use. When comparing an alkaline AA battery to a diamond beta battery, the alkaline battery looks to have a higher storage rating. Still, the diamond beta battery can deliver electricity consistently for a more extended period of time. A 20 gram alkaline battery has a power density storage rating of 700 joules per gram, and will run out of power after 24 hours of continuous operation. However, a 1 gram C14 diamond battery can create 15 joules daily for 5,700 years, giving it a 2.7 terajoules rating. The electricity generated is more than enough to power a smartphone, but it can also operate pacemakers, timing devices, artificial pancreas, high altitude drones, and even satellites and spacecraft. Under the direction of geochemist Tom Scott, a member of the Cobot Institute and a professor of materials at the University of Bristol's Interface Analysis Center, a team of scientists had previously built a prototype battery from a Nichols 63's unstable isotope, with a half-life of barely 100 years. On November 25, 2016, they presented their idea and its incredible outcomes at the Ideas to Change the World conference and the response from the scientific community and the market were overwhelming. A Global Nuclear Battery Market 2017 report was recently published by MRS Research and distributed by SB Wire. It overviews the nuclear battery market segmentation up to the second or third level based on application, technology, and users, and geographic locations. The report features historical and statistical data on regional and global markets from both volume and value. All the data was collected with the help of industry professionals, members, and analysts, which was rigorously analyzed by quantitative and qualitative techniques. It also features information about various factors that influence market dynamics. This report is equally helpful for manufacturers, consumers, and investors. The usage of nano batteries in electric vehicles has been questioned. According to some investigative reports, the nuclear diamond battery would have to be larger than the EV to complete the job. The carbon-14 in the battery can't create enough energy fast enough to be usable in a system that requires sustained high-power demands. However, proponents argue that a Tesla's EV battery may be substituted with a more powerful, less expensive one. 
that could last up to 90 years without needing to be recharged. The team leader at the University of Bristol, Professor Tom Scott, was questioned by New Atlas regarding claims surrounding the Nano Diamond battery, which the team initially publicized in 2016. Morgan Boardman, an industrial fellow and strategic advising consultant with the Aspire Diamond Group at the University of Bristol's Southwest Nuclear Hub, was also interviewed for the book. Boardman believes that beta batteries provide too little power to replace the cells in your iPhone or Tesla, but that one could be developed for such reasons. Albeit, it would have to be many times the size of the item it is powering. He says that the University of Bristol filed patents covering all devices that embed radioisotopes in diamond formations, which Arkenlight currently owns. We have experienced mind-boggling innovations led by Elon. The NDB technology could be his next move. Elon Musk is well known for being pro-nuclear. Nuclear energy is termed clean energy since it does not emit greenhouse gases during production. Legacy nuclear power facilities, on the other hand, may have a negative image as a result of some high-profile mishaps. I believe contemporary nuclear power plants are safe, contrary to popular belief, Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk remarked. It is barely comprehensible what NDB technology does in revolutionizing the battery capacity of EVs. But will nuclear diamond battery ever see the light of day? For now, we keep waiting until next year, when it has been rumored that Tesla will unfold it in 2023. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Anyways guys, if you want to see more interesting videos, click the video right above. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe with all notifications enabled so that you don't miss out on the latest Elon Musk news.